Hello and welcome back to your creativity workouts for art and for life. In today's video, I'm going to be creating three collages and one painting. And my intent in this video is to illustrate the techniques that I use, but also to show you how messy my creative process is. And I don't just mean messy like I'm making a mess all over the place, which I am. Fortunately, I have a drop cloth for that. It's not a straightforward process. It's actually a circuitous route, and it works only when I tell my hypercritical, very judgmental, conscious mind to take a hike and tell it where to go for a while so that I can let my subconscious mind come forth and produce whatever it does. It's just kind of channeling is what I call it. So please enjoy the video and if you do like and subscribe, thanks very much. As you can see, I'm using mostly shades of gray for this project. I'm placing some ivory black on this sheet of paper here with a bunch of water. This is acrylic, I'm doing acrylic watercolors. I'm spreading acrylic paint in a variety of different ways. This is some Mars black mixed with white. I've mixed myself up a whole bunch of different grays here. And I am spreading things on papers willy nilly with any little device I can find for spreading the stuff. And I am not thinking about what I'm doing. I am channeling my inner five year old, or actually maybe my inner two year old. I'm just trying to create marks using different shades of gray. There's going to be a couple pieces of color that I add in here too. And I'm working on the ground. I love the floor. Okay, there's another slightly different shade of gray that I use because I use Mars black. And I love working on the floor because I have a lot of space on the floor. And I am painting here on 100 pound Bristol board just making a bunch of different marks and shapes. There I use the back of my paintbrush to make some scratchy marks on the paper. And I'm just going, hmm, 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 what should I do next? And flitting around from one little thing to the other. That's a house painting brush. Anything that will spread the paint is fine. It's not that I don't love the fancy paint brushes you can get at the art store, but they're not necessary. That little piece of plastic is actually a seed marker. Sometimes I spread the paint on without adding any water color to it and sometimes I just add water to it and thin it down a bit and you can see that I paint one thing and then I paint over it and completely destroy it and start from scratch that's okay too I am pretending that I am two Uh-oh, there was a little pause for an actual conscious thought. Mm. Well, I get rid of those pretty quickly, which is actually part of the process here. I'm really, and I don't know how you make an effort not to make a conscious effort, but that's actually sort of what I'm attempting to do here. I'm moving quickly, not as quickly as this sped up video would have you believe, but I'm moving fairly quickly. And it's fun to take things off as well as add them. I can scrape them, put more paint on, scrape it off again. Just keep going to see what kind of cool little marks end up on the paper. And I've got some pretty big pots of paint here, so I'm not being precious with my paint. And if you recall, I end up with four small pieces in the end and look at all the paper that I'm using here. 
I do have a lot of leftovers when I'm done, but those can always be used for future collages. You never know what they're going to inspire. That's a paint, an edge painting tool. I think I got it off of Amazon. It makes for nice straight lines and it's kind of fun to use. And the edge on this thing is sharp, but not too sharp, and it's stainless steel, I think, so it's really easy to clean. And there I am using a paper towel to spread things around. That's also fun. Anything goes. including finger painting. Why not? I guess if I was two, I wouldn't be screwing the lids back on the jars to make sure the paint doesn't dry up, but well, close enough to be my inner two-year-old. That's another fun technique too. Just kind of gets a thin watercolory kind of surface on there. Fold it over and see if it prints. It didn't do much, but whatever. Okay, now I'm going to try some alizarin crimson, add a little bit of color in here. And you'll notice I'm painting on the fronts and the backs of these things. I'm just making a mess. At least according to my conscious mind, I'm making a mess. Maybe my subconscious mind has a clue what I'm doing but I can't really access it, so I don't know. I mean, I can access it, I just can't talk to it. It's funny how your unconscious mind can come out in the creative process without telling you what it's really up to. And the weirdest thing of all is when things actually come together in the end and you go, oh my gosh, how did I come up with that? And the answer is I'll never know. What I did there was combine a little bit, and I'm doing the same thing here. Well, I was. Some cool Mars black and some warm ivory black. That's what I'm doing here, putting some warm ivory black over this cool Mars black. Just to make it a little bit different. The warmer color's a little more yellow, the cooler color's a little more blue. Just a contrast. That's what's going on here on this paper too. Changing my mind again. Changing your mind is a really good thing when it comes to making art. It's to be encouraged.
Okay, now we're done painting and it's time to cut. I'm using my quilting mat and also my quilting ruler to chop this thing up. And I'm putting a tiny, tiny amount of thought into what I'm doing. Basically one cut ahead of time, I'm deciding what the next cut is going to be. That way I don't have too much in the way of conscious thought going into the process. Okay, now I'm going to start arranging these things and see if I can come up with something. Hint, I don't. I do arrange this an awful lot of different ways at this stage of the game, but I really don't come up with anything that is part of my final design. However, I do have this belief that somehow or other, by arranging these things and looking at them over and over again, I am placing them into the back of my mind, and when I do come up with my final idea, whatever's happening here is going to be part of that process as well. All I can say is that I'm guessing because the subconscious is a bit of a mystery, but it's where all the creativity comes from. So, even if I can't figure it out, I got to use it, right? And as I'm going through all of this, you're probably going to see some things that I come up with and you're going to say, stop, you're done, that's how it's supposed to be. And well, maybe that was the case, but I went on anyway. And the more art I do, the more I'm okay with that and less precious. What I'm doing right here is taking all these wrinkly pieces of paper, placing them between sheets of baking parchment, putting a little bit of water on the back of each one and then I am going to place a board on top of them and a heavy weight on top of the board and all I have to do is wait 24 hours or maybe even just 12 hours overnight and they're going to be perfectly flat. There you go. Okay. Now what I'm doing here is painting white on white. I'm going for texture. And this is my old house painting brush. I wouldn't dare use it for any more house painting because it's been destroyed, but that fact makes the bristles kind of nice and stiff and creates a really cool texture. Yeah, look how nice and flat these things came out. They are pancakes. Sometimes a little matte medium gets stuck on there. Okay, ready for the next stage. Okay, so I lost the footage where I created this um, because I lost the design and then I had to find it again and I panicked and somehow the camera turned off and I got all freaked out and I found it again. So here it is. Still panicking a tiny bit, trying to remember exactly how I had it, that I liked it because I saw something that I liked and I want to make sure it comes back again. Okay, found it. And I put some weights, anything that can come to hand, whatever happens to be right next to me to make sure that I do not lose this design again.
And I'm just using some matte medium to glue this down. I think matte medium works for me sometimes. It actually depends on what I'm doing a little bit better than the, um, actually this is gel medium. It works a little better than the matte medium because the gel's a little bit stiffer. Sometimes the matte medium works fine as glue as well. Okay, now this one takes a while and goes through a few phases. And since I'm showing you this video in the order in which I created things, we'll be doing a little of this and then moving to a little of that and back again. And you'll notice there's two blacks on here. The one on the right is the ivory black, which is the warmer, more yellow black. And the one on the left is the Mars black, which is a cooler, bluer black. Okay, now I am going to start painting some shades of gray onto this, just adding some, some lighter shades of gray. I mix these all up ahead of time. I got more gray than I know what to do with for a long time, but I'll think of something. a little bit of color. This is cobalt turquoise. It's beautiful. And I'm using my seed spreader and spreading. This has the same effect that you would get with using a credit card or a stiff piece of cardboard. And the grays here, I'm using titanium white and Mars black to create all of those shades of gray. Now this was painted with Mars black watered down. And I am going to be adding to it some ivory black. So I get a little contrast between the warm and the cool. And I'm going to be adding some of the ivory black to this as well to tone it down a little bit. It's kind of really brightening your face. I mean, it's going to be brightening your face when I end up too, but it's just going to tone it down a little bit with a tiny bit of the ivory black on top of it. As you see here in a second, I'm going to wipe most of it away, but just a tiny bit will remain. enough to create a tiny bit of depth.
Okay, back to this. Finishing touches. I just got to cut off the part that's hanging off the edge. Like I said, I made this video in the order that I actually created these pieces. So I put one thing inside and then I brought out another and put it aside and brought out another. And what I'm doing here is noticing that my eye is going out towards the edges and I want to bring my eye in towards the center of the painting. And therefore I'm cutting out off the edges that appear to be distracting my eye. And in order to see that, I used what I call my cropping tools, which are just L-shaped pieces of paper that I cut out of some, I think it was Bristol board or watercolor paper, or basically the paper that I paint on. And as you can see, using the uh, quilting mat and the quilting ruler makes it really easy to cut straight lines. You don't want to waste any paint if possible. And I have a little bit left down at the bottom of that cadmium yellow tube. So I chop it off so I don't waste it. I'm also using a lizard and crimson and just a plain red. I think that's a craft paint of some sort that I happen to have lying around. And I didn't have my palette paper right next to me, and I did happen to have a piece of freezer paper, so I just used that for the palette. It doesn't really work as well as freezer paper, but anything in a pinch. And here I'm just checking out the colors. Sometimes I don't like to leave my work area if I'm on a roll, so to speak. So I just grab what's around. I'm just trying to figure out colors here. What might go with that? Now I'm just going to create a couple pages worth of orangey kind of stuff. I don't want it flat orange. So I'm mixing the yellows and the reds together and painting them in such a way that I have more than a solid field of orange. It's got some variation in it. Why I'm using that tiny little brush, I don't know. But the strokes are kind of cool. And speaking of cheap brushes, I think that's part of a set of about 20 brushes I got for $10 at Dick Blick. I did pay full price, $10, for that palette knife. That's a big spend for me. Not that I have any objection to spending money on things, but if I don't have to, pretty much anything can be used as a paint application tool for this particular style of working. Now I'm going to be mixing my orange directly on the paper. I think I'm going to use two different reds here. I'm going to use the crimson, which is a bluer, cooler red, the alizarin crimson. And the red poster paint is a warmer red. It looks more like a cadmium type red. I don't think that's the name of it. It's just called craft paint red or something. But it's acrylic and it works just fine.
why did I choose to make those oranges the way I did? I don't know. Now I'm adding some yellow to this black area and some orange to it as well. Just to kind of emphasize the, the lines and the textures in the black paint. Somehow it brings it out. Put some black on top of the white. You can see how it emphasizes the lines that I scratched in. And I'm wiping it off with a damp paper towel. I'm getting a little bit of orange in there now. I try all sorts of things just to see what happens. Now that's a bit of a disaster, but that's okay. use some handprints on there and then I wiped them off. That's a little bit of the ivory black to tone it down a bit. Okay, now I'm going to start cutting some things out again. Thinking only one cut ahead. Arranging things in ways that look not the way they're going to in the end, but that's okay. And I didn't know when I cut this shape out that it was going to be one of the shapes in one of my final pieces, but that it wasn't going to be used in the way that I anticipate. So what the heck? That's why I just keep going. It's kind of nice to discover things. Some of it may come from my subconscious mind and some of it might just be something random that I recognize. You never know. I like the way it framed that little scene there. So why did I cut out the frame instead of gluing this on there like I normally would? So that you could see the background through the frame? I don't know. I just didn't. So many possibilities. There, that's better for the emphasis line underneath. Nope. When I look at this, as you can tell, a hundred different ways at least before I find what I'm looking for. But I know I'm on to something. I just can't figure out exactly what it is I'm looking for. Okay, that little thing down there at the bottom is sort of what did it. Now I'm going to start gluing things together. Just so that they sort of stick. Well, it's okay. So now I will try and glue them together, framing them up with my little L bracket croppers. Again and again and again. Now I'm going to dry it a few hours later. I realize that that little portion down at the bottom is not exactly where I wanted it to be. So I'm going to cut off the edges and then I'm going to tear that bottom piece off and move it 
I need it to be up just a tiny bit. And I need some orange because there's a little empty spot underneath there. So I found another piece of orange paper to glue underneath. And when I ripped the glue off, I got some white spots. I painted over them with yellow and I like them. So we'll set that aside. And now we'll come to this. And we'll see what happens here. I'm loving this shape, but I can't figure out exactly what colors and textures I want for that shape. So I cut it out in a variety of different papers and place it all over the paper before I come up with my final design. It takes a while. It's a process. Fortunately, I'm enjoying myself. And I can tell I'm enjoying myself because instead of searching for the proper tool, I grabbed that little piece of plexiglass that happened to be right next to me and just used it as a straight edge. And now I'm grabbing a little scrap of paper that happens to be near me and painting on it. That's how I can sort of tell I'm in the flow. Even though the flow currently is going in the wrong direction, it's still part of the flow. And I just keep cutting and cutting and taking a look at where the shapes end up. And I just keep going and going and going. So now we got the right shape here, but the colors are all wrong. So time to keep trying some more. I think we're getting closer. Okay, that's good there, but it's not quite right. What next? I don't know. I'm just going to glue that on because I've decided I like it cut that edge off and I realize it's, it's not quite finished. Something else has to happen. And this takes a while. And my brain just takes a while to go to the right spot. Okay, finally, I think I almost found it, but then I lost it and then I found it again and then I lost it. And that's just the process. There we go. That goes right over there. Okay. And we'll put this down at the bottom. And I think that's too much. But I'll chop off the edges. Yep, not working. Let's cut that off. Okay, finally. Now, time to go back to this one. I have to make the final cuts on it to crop it up nicely. So I'll use my little cropping tools just to make sure that I know what I'm up to. And I will cut. Nope, I will measure again. I'm not exactly measuring, but I have to make sure that I know what I'm talking about here. Okay, that's the right spot. Chop. Finally, we're done. That was lots of fun. And here are the final results. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please like and subscribe. Thanks very much for watching. And we'll see you in the next video.